It being 7.30, I will open this meeting. I will begin by reminding everyone that this meeting is being recorded. So, um, don't have a lot of stuff on the agenda tonight, but uh, we do have a couple sets of minutes and uh, which we could probably dispense of uh, right off. We have four ZBAs none of which to look to be too difficult. So um, uh, perhaps um, we should start out with motions. And Ryan, you have some motions for us for those meeting minutes? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the minutes dated January 18th, 2022. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any uh, changes or omissions? No. Hearing none, uh, all in favor, please. Well, I gotta, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting I got a roll call this thing. So. Uh, so, uh, how say you, Mr. Hayden? Aye. Mr. Johnson? Aye. And Mr. Carroll? Aye. And I am aye as well. So, if you would, please, Mr. Carroll? Chairman, I move to approve the minutes dated February 15th, 2022. Okay, do I have a second? Oh, second? second. Okay, seconded by Mr. Hayden. Any uh, changes or omissions? Hearing none, uh, Mr. Hayden, how say you? Aye. And Mr. Johnson? Aye. And Mr. Carroll? Aye. And myself is aye, that's four in favor, no opposed. Okay, um, how about uh, if we talk about, if you could for a couple of minutes, Danielle, this North Reading, trail final feasibility report. Yeah, uh, I mean, I didn't put it on as its own agenda item, but I was sent uh, the other day um, by Phil Hertz, who from the Land Utilization Committee, who's been working on this. He wanted to just uh, send an update and just let us know where things stood. Um, their study, uh, the work that they did with the town meeting appropriation from a couple of years ago um, with the consultant uh, BSC group um, is coming to an end or has come to an end. Um, and they've published this um, report that has some, you know, several possible um, routes. So um, I think their goal is to get in front of the select board um, at some point soon to discuss some issues relating to easements needed on private properties, um, potentially on some of these routes, I think most of the routes, and then eventually to um, ask the town for funding um, for the next phase, which would be a design phase, um, so they could be eligible for the, the uh, transportation improvement plan funds uh, from the state. So that's where I think that project stands right now. Um, just because you know Phil was kind enough to share that with me, I wanted to uh, just share it with you, um, just uh, just so you knew okay. what was was happening. No do, request do have, from us. Is it is there funds available already for that, or do we have to apply for them? Um, at, so the funds that we had were just the town meeting funds for this study. Um, right. There are funds that are potentially available that Phil is looking into um, for grant funding to help offset some of the cost of design. And then once the design is at a certain percentage, um, the goal is to ask for the, the project to be fully funded through the, the TIP program. Okay. So, you know, with the major highway funding. Right, right, right. That's, that, that's the goal, so. Okay, any uh, questions or comments on that? Okay. Uh, okay. Um, we might as well look at a couple of these ZBAs since... Uh, uh, everything that we don't have the other, our other doesn't thing doesn't come up till eight o'clock. Sure. Um, so, Three forty uh, main has been continued. So. Okay. So uh, forty Abbott Road. We don't have too much. We don't have much. Just. Yeah, and I'm actually just seeing these applications today. Um, I'm looking through the application form itself to see what this is a request for. He wants to run a food truck catering business oh, in, out of his house. So. Did you research it? 
Um, oh, so home occupation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't. Um, I mean, I, I mean, it sounds okay. I mean, a lot of the times these guys don't keep much food on the truck overnight. Where's he going to garage it? At his house? Yeah, you can, you can have one commercial vehicle at his house. Yeah. Doesn't, sound like, doesn't sound like he even wants to do that. It's just to use the home office. The business isn't run. The right. truck portion isn't even run out of there. I don't, I don't, uh, I would not, I would be surprised, Ryan, if they didn't keep the truck there, however it is allowed, so. Um, they like to get started early in the morning and go around to all the construction sites, you know, so. Um, that says he goes to, to Cater's lunch, but yeah. whatever. Yeah. So any comments on this from anybody or are we okay with that? It's the standard. Uh, Sounds like it fits in the four corners. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, for home occupation. Okay. Yeah, so. Twenty eight Hollywood Terrace. Pretty much the same thing. This, yeah. This applicant yeah, states that it'll just be the one one ton truck too. So yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. Say do not object as long as the home occupation bylaw is yeah. adhered to. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. That's what it's for. All right. Um, and then we have eleven Kings Row. Uh, two car garage. We got a plan, I think. Uh, I'm sorry. Can I tell you? It's a three car garage. Three cars, huh? Yeah, yeah they three. called right to clarify. It wasn't done. It wasn't stated correctly in the application, apparently. So it's a three car garage. Yeah, taking a little too long to load here. Um, I know. Can okay, you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Screen share. Screen share it. Okay. Yeah, because mine. I'm, I'm taking too long to download. Sure. Um, I should have downloaded it earlier today. So. Oh yeah, it's not just the garage. It's also an addition above the garage. Yeah. <clears throat> so they got to make their house. Bigger. Yeah, There's also an here. elevation here, um, which I can open. <sighs> oh, I see. It's a before and after. Okay. Okay, um, if you want me to go back to the plot plan portion. Yeah. I okay, so existing garage to be removed, proposed. Oh, I see where it's bumping out to the side there. Proposed yeah. 30. My 40 edition. Looks like the setback would go down to 20.1 feet on the side. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Yeah, it's kind of hard if you don't see what's right next door to the right there. Yeah. yeah. Do you want me to, I can. It's the back of someone's house, I'll bet you. Let me see. This Castle Road is right there. All right, 11 Kings Row, so. So the developer followed one line, not the other line, huh, Lord? Yeah. Because <clears throat> it looks it looks like the the line on lot forty five looks like it's pretty parallel to that. What happens when you don't have straight lines? Yeah, I know. Oh, stop that now! Sorry, <laughs> just trying to get back the image. No, I got, I got it downloaded now. So, oh, I see it. You see it? I can't get rid of the the top, the topos. I, on, I don't I don't really need the topos. Just turn yeah, that off. Yeah, come down and just, click on that little check mark there, Danielle. Click that one off. That's good enough. Just, we don't need. To, oh, okay. You know, All right. We don't need. We don't need to see the just lines. Okay. All right. Okay. So where is uh, we're number eleven? It's so I think it's number 40, nine. It would impact. Slot forty-four. Does that help? It should be highlighted. Do you see it highlighted? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So I guess the garage would be built out toward the side, heading toward. Um, oh, so it's it's on number that nine. One. Yeah. So they would have twenty-one. So that gets reduced to twenty-one feet, which is where it looks like it's more like twenty-four-seven closer to the front, but but uh, definitely looks like. Uh, it's, no, that's uh, 20.1. 20.1 in the back. That's getting tight. Yeah. 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 Ex existing is 37, 37.8. So it's basically cutting that. Yeah, existing yeah. set back in half. Almost in half. Yeah. And I, I was trying to look at, at their, uh, what their elevations, not elevations, but their floor plans. And I don't know if I saw a floor plan for what they're going to do with this. Let's see. Yeah, it's in the old Proposed first floor. Oh, yeah, they don't tell you what they're going to do with the second floor, but it uh, looks like an extra bathroom at least. Mm. I'll be a master suite. Oh, we'll yeah. Huge closets. Yeah. What's there now? Well, um, basically, it's up to the building department to make sure that it's, you know, that it matches what exists for a septic system and all that. If they're going to add, see, sometimes all towns are different. Um, some it's towns, four bedrooms you, now. Huh? It's four bedrooms in that house yeah, I now. Know, I know, but but some towns, because I run into it in, in a few different towns. Some towns, if you increase the square footage of the building by any amount. You will automatically uh, trigger, you know, uh, um, an, a, an upgrade of a septic system or something, depending yeah. on what you got. Because the, the, what's the total number of rooms in the house right now? If there's eight rooms in the house and this makes nine, or if it's nine rooms in the house now and this makes ten, then they would have to have a five bedroom system. So I mean, there's, you know, but again, that's the building inspector should be making that decision. Where oh, they got ten rooms. Yeah, they got ten rooms in this house now, Warren. Yeah. So this is our 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 job only is to decide whether or not we ha uh, find something wrong. I mean, I don't see because they're uh, using a loft over the garage as it is right now. Yeah. yeah. 
So I don't know. I mean, I, I would, uh, you know, I guess the question is, do they, you know, do they, do they need that third garage so bad that they need to take a get a variance? They don't need it. I think the third garage just becomes there. Yeah. I think you could get away without the variance if you weren't adding the large second entrance between the garage and the existing home too. Yeah. 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 That's true. I mean, my only objection to it is the reason is that they need a two car garage. So then now they've added an entrance and a three car garage. <laughs> like, right. If the entrance wasn't it, there, you're right. You'd pull it back. It's not really much of a hardship in my mind. And I just no. I wonder whether we should just be kind of granting variances without real cause here. Yeah. That said, I mean, I it, is a, Ryan, it is a it is a wooden sorry, yeah. sorry, Warren. It is a, a wooden separation from the abutter. So I mean the, the real yeah. impact here is just that butter at number nine. Yep. So, yeah, but um, how much wood's going away when they put this house in? They're gonna cut down trees to put this in. Well, it looks like the existing falls short of their current driveway setup. They have a basketball hoop off to the side there. Mm -hmm. And and if you see the the overlay on the plot plan, it falls short of the existing driveway. So presumably they could, you know, build this without, you know, cutting down any of those trees. But right, right. Well, I mean, again, the hardship thing comes into play. We've had that discussion with the Board of Appeals for ever since I've been on this board. Uh, yep. You know, Me too. About, is there a hardship here? Is there really a hard? Some of the times, you know, people are doing stuff. Not there's no hardship. It's it's just something that they want to do. And the, the zoning was there to protect the neighborhood, to provide, you know, buffers for everything. So every time they give a variance, just because somebody wants to, it makes you wonder why bother having a zoning bylaw if, if you just ultimately got to let them build as close right. to the lot as they want. Yeah. What's the point of the zoning bylaw? But, you know, Ryan, you're right. That's an eight foot entry. If that entry yeah. wasn't there, there would be no uh, no issue, yeah. right? There'd be no issue. And since they don't tell us what they're gonna do with the, the proposed second floor, they could be doing almost anything with that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could certainly just say your hardship with a question mark. Mm -hmm. And leave it at that. I mean, they're used to seeing that from us, so <laughs> yeah, nothing new. Yeah. There's there's no hardship for, for, for this anyways. So yeah, there's no hardship. This, and the, the law doesn't give you a hardship. All this does is is circumvent the building department and the zoning yep. bylaw. Yep. So that's Great. all it does. Yep. So if that's what they want to do and the zoning board of appeals feels that there's enough of a hardship here for them, if they if if they just can't keep and all their cars indoors the way they want to, then that's a hardship. You know, I mean, there you go. Well, make the building smaller by taking out that entry and then they won't have any problem. They can have their three car garage. Well, you could probably go to the meeting and explain that to them, but <sighs> I, think, I think for the, for the sake, for our, for our, for the sake of our discussion, um, I would, I would have to say that we uh, just ask, where's the hardship? Okay. Yep. okay. Leave it at that. So, so I think that's so what is three forty Main Street, Danielle, if I may. That one came in a little while ago, but it's been continued a few times. Um, I'm trying to remember what the issues were. Uh, there were some violations, I thought, maybe an appeal. Uh, should probably take a look at the old application. Do they want to store material? Let me see. going back to a previous folder. Yeah, right now this folder is empty, so. Yeah, there's nothing in there. Yeah, they, I mean, we didn't get anything new. I'm just trying to remember when it first came in. Um, oh, I think I, it was in the last. Yeah, no, that's the, last that's the gas station down the end there. 
uh, Payne. Oh Garage. yeah, that's Payne's paint. We used to be Payne's Garage down there. The landscaper has it now, and he wants to run his landscaping business out of there. Oh no and, no. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know you're right. I don't know why. This this gave me the gas station right next to uh, at Maine and. Uh, Oh, it's a special permit to run a construction landscaping business at the yes. Main Street. Yeah, that's what I just said. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> I was no, you're right, Warren. I was the one that said I was no. looking. I, rem I remembered. Yeah, okay. Well, that's that one. And yeah, I guess yeah. if it's been continued, if you want to say anything more about it, you certainly can. Yeah. Um, I think the I think there's been a number of requests to clean the place up because it was a little junky, but and mm. but you know, landscaper. One would assume that a landscaper would try to make it look at least reasonably pretty, <laughs> since that since we're yeah. doing more advertising for a landscape to have a place looks like a dump, <laughs> you know. Uh, you don't know what they're gonna do. Yeah, they they yeah. people don't go look at their sites. Yeah, Kathy said something about it coming back maybe in April. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure why we what was. I think there are conservation issues there too. I think I think there are wetlands close by, and uh, and you got Batchelder yeah. Ave behind it. Yeah, I think they wanted to put some big vehicles in there too. They were having trouble. I don't recall any big vehicles, but uh, but I know that site uh, is a little uh, a little difficult. Um. um but I don't recall what, uh, what the, I know we heard a little bit about it and then it, then it went away, so. Right. So hopefully they'll get it all squared away before they bring it back here and we'll uh, see how that goes. J-S-A-L-L-C, who the heck is that? Oh, is that the group that bought it? That's who owns it right now. Yeah, yeah. It's on our tax things. Jefferson Science Associates. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think this is this is the same. I think they has a, a a second JSA because yeah. the one I just found is uh, is Thomas Jefferson Natural National Accelerator Facility. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's it. <laughs> I don't think there's a neutron accelerator there. No. <laughs> oh, it's a looks like a construction company, maybe Warren. Yeah, they're gonna. Yeah, sure. they, what they are is a, a, a landscape. Call themselves a landscape construction company. That's what they call themselves, as I recall. Yeah, they had. Some, I thought they had some pretty big equipment that they were trying to fit in that lot. Well, they could. They could have. Um, I mean, they could have uh, a, a landscape construction. You know, could do anything to, from trees, tree work, oh, to yeah. whatever. So they could have some good size equipment, but um, that's something that uh, the board of appeals would work on. Um, you would hope. Uh, and and again, all we would you know again, but our only responsibility in that particular case will be to request that they you know that they meet the bylaws. Our, right. A lot use some screening and you know fencing and all that stuff. So that's the first impression property for our town too. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. bad right now. Yeah, yeah it, it, it really is. Been, I mean, it has well, become up one. They've had a number of requests to clean it up from the building department in the past. Um, but I think there was, uh, I think there were multiple owners and not everybody was involved in the actual use of the property. And I thought, so I think it was a cluster. So yeah, uh, it, it, signifies, it signifies the difference between Andover and North Reading in one yeah. <laughs> quick little, one quick little path over the border. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, yeah. 
Well, then all we can hope is that this landscape the constru contractor makes it pretty because that's his advertising. So <laughs> we can only hope. Um, but we'll see, I guess, uh, in a couple of months when they bring it all, when they bring it all back. So, um, okay, so we actually have a few more minutes, Danielle. Do you have anything on, uh, on planning administrative updates or? Yeah, just a couple of announcements. Um, Lauren and I spoke a little bit earlier today. Our, our CPC budget hearing, um, I was told was gonna be scheduled for March 14th. I know uh, Warren is away that week. So um, I've asked if it can be on the 28th instead. Um, I haven't heard back yet, but I will let you know all the budget hearings are either the 14th or the 28th. So I'll let you know uh, which of those it will be if for those of you who would like to attend. Um, and on that same night, whatever night it happens to be, um, we're all going also going to try to take care of the Economic Development Committee um, at, is in need of some joint appointments. And also, I was going to be speaking about the new MBTA community housing requirements, which um, does impact North Reading. Um, and we will probably have some uh, zoning decisions to make about what sorts of changes we may or may not want to make. But um, we, for now, in order to remain in compliance with what the state is asking communities to do, all we have to do is the select board is required to host um, a, a meeting. Having this on their agenda will qualify. Um, I'll give a very brief presentation. It won't be long, just about what the expectation is and what the timeline is over the next uh, you know, few years. So stay tuned. That'll either be the 14th or the 28th. Um, I'll let you know as, as, soon, as, as soon as I do. Um, and... I did also want to mention just about our virtual versus in-person meetings. I had thought that the option for virtual meetings ended in April. It actually is, has been extended until July 15th. So I don't know if you want to have this discussion now or later, um, if you want to think about it, but um, whatever you prefer to do um, is, is well, fine. We can, we can talk about it for a minute, but I'd also like to just mention, that, can we move that? Does anybody have any opposition to moving that 15th meeting to the 22nd? Oh, great. I don't Let's move our, our regular meeting from the 15th to the March 22nd. Yeah, is there anything on there, Danielle? Not, Not right yet. now. So I, I, I vote to move it. Okay. Ryan, you no okay problem. with that? Okay, thank you, Jeremiah. Ryan, yeah. you okay? No okay. All right, let's do that so that you know that way I can attend. I'll be I'll be I'll be back. So, <clears throat> so um Okay, so going back to the uh, mask thing, um, what uh, you know, what does everybody think about that? I mean, the the um, I know Danielle has mixed feelings, and I know I do too about it. I mean, I, I like the in person thing. It's I think you I think you get more information traveling back and forth between people. It's easier for everybody to put their two cents worth in, if you will, but. But we usually get a lot more participation on Zoom, so it's a it's a double-edged sword. Okay. Yeah, I think we do, but I think we're missing out on on reviewing some stuff, especially with uh, bigger bigger plans and things. Yeah, um, you know, I, I it just it makes it more difficult when an engineer explains something and they're sharing their screen. You can only see what he wants you to see. He doesn't. You don't get to see it big and you can't look at something at the same yeah. time so you're losing out on that um and mm -hmm. I, I think that's that's that could hurt us in in the future all right so you're in favor of going back to in person yes yeah brian what do you think yeah i'd say the same i mean I'm, yeah I'm, I'm pretty ambivalent on the timing it's been a couple of years so if we wanted to wait mm -hmm. a little bit longer until the weather warms up and you know people are more assured that I think that's reasonable. And if everyone wants to go back immediately, I'm fine with that too. I, I agree yeah, with I Chris. That, I mean, there's something being lost with not having another right. person. That said, we've done it for two years. So, yeah. you know, another month or two wouldn't kill anybody either. So, yeah, I said the same thing you did. I said, you know, in the cold weather, if we waited for it to get a little warmer, there would be everybody would be happy about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, how about what do you, uh, uh, Jeremiah? How say you? What do you think? Um, I think I'm a little uniquely positioned in the sense that I've got, you know, the uh, the young baby who's too young for the vaccine. So we're still very conservative in how we approach things around our house. Um, but at the same time, I mean, 
things are improving. And I, I think that uh, once we're dealing with warmer weather and the trends that go with the warmer weather, I probably won't give as much grief if I get, uh, if I go to a meeting. <laughs> we don't need you to have grief, Jeremiah. So what I was saying, what I, so I was thinking about this and, we, and the, a middle of the road approach would be, we'll have one more Zoom meeting and then in April we'll start with in-person. Um, that gives everybody a chance to prepare for it, plenty of time to think about it and prepare for it. And also gives us a chance to check the landscape one more time before we take the plunge. What do you think? That's fine with me. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would probably work. Because we kind of, Daniel and I kind of talked about that too, that kind of a time frame, give everybody a chance to uh, be prepared and, and, and set their home schedules and everything so that they can uh, go back to in-person meetings. So. so we'll do one more Zoom. It'll be the 22nd. And then the next meeting we do will be uh, in April. Um, and that will be an in-person meeting. And, well, Debbie probably has heard all this, so she'll make sure that's how it shows up. Um, it should be good. I'm just so looking forward to seeing all of you in person. Yes. <laughs> that's you too, Debbie. I'm not you sure if you're being You don't like seeing us one at a time, Deb? <laughs> Warren, you know me too well. Yeah. <laughs> all righty, good. Well, it's 8.02, so that means that we can, uh, we can go into the public hearing. And uh, which I don't think it's better. Off. Okay. And I noticed we have a new name for Cranberry Meadows. Um, so um, right now, my understanding is that uh, DCI is uh, and, and the developer have uh, come to an agreement on all of the issues that we had that were outstanding. So, um, do we have anything, that, any presentation that needs to be done to further that, or are we? Uh, did you have anything, Jill, that, that you wanted to bring in? No, I mean I think Diane, um, Ms. McKnight and I um, exchanged. God bless you. Um, we exchanged. Um, documents, because I know I have to do the supplementary restrictive, the statutory covenant, I delivered right, right. all of that to her. Um, the decision looked good, the conditions were reasonable as, you know, the, the change. So I think this is like the second or third, right, Ms. McKnight, that we have with regard to the homeowner association and owning basically those um, infrastructure elements in, in those basins. The drainage system, private yes. property. Hmm? Yeah the, yeah, the drainage systems. Yeah, yep. yeah. So that's all reflected. Storm We've water systems. It and we're done. So you said, did you say they, they, the homeowner uh, paperwork is not done or it is being done? We will agree. Well, they don't exist yet. So we will um, like create a homeowners association, which simply is uh, the way I intend to do it because it's, it's only a contractual fiction. It's not like a condominium. So in right. the deeds, I'll make everybody obligated. That's how I plan on doing it. I suppose, you know what I could do? I didn't think of this. I could add it um, to the supplementary restrictive covenant. You want me to do that? Like I'll add a, a provision about that and I'll pull it from the decision and download it in. Do you think, I think that'll work. I think that works well. Yeah. I, that I, way I'll, everyone I'll, has it. Exactly. When you search for that property, it'll always come up. Um, and I'll list because I know exactly which properties. The only ones that don't have on-site drainage it are um, two and three. Only lots two and three. Everybody right. else has some form, either access right, or right. something. So that means uh, so that's uh, uh, a change that will be made as a result of tonight's meeting. Yep. So a modification for so tonight's meeting, and so the draft conditional approval will have that as a uh, an addition for tonight. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah, because I'll just, we'll just add that as a condition to add it in the supplementary. Right, right. Yeah, and I, I did put some language in there about the um, the Homeowners Association and also um, the the town engineer and I had had a discussion today um, and there had been, um, you know, attorney man and I were in contact because um, he just wanted to make sure that it was very clear because it's one thing to say that, um, you know, the town will not maintain anything on private property, but he said, you know, there can be some gray areas for when, um, you know, at, at what point um, does 
you know, does that change? Does it change right at the property line? What if there's a pipe? So he had suggested that each of the manholes be available in the right of way at the property line so that the town could access it without entering onto private property. So we straightened that out until it was to his satisfaction. So that is reflected in the draft um, approval. I, and we are, I actually asked the, um, you know, the, the um, engineer to put that on and then also to remember that he has to add a whole sheet with the conditions. So when you get the plans to review after, if the board so chooses this evening, I'll then have the mylars delivered mylars deliver to you so you can review them as you always do. And I'll have so the man all pushed out. Yeah. So the, uh, the, the last thing I think to, uh, was if you recall, the, the fire department wanted 18 foot wide driveways. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> however, however, I spent some time on the phone with him today, and um, I told him that I was going to request 12 foot wide driveways, if we could all agree to at least a, um, a minimum of 12 foot wide driveways, um, that would give them the opportunity to get in around corners on things and, and, um, 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 I, you know, because I, I basically told him that we couldn't really begin to you know, that'd be selective enforcement of a rule that doesn't exist, you know. And for the record, the um, the um, requirement for 18 foot wide roadways, which was in NFPA, is, it was actually taken out. So it doesn't even exist in the NFPA code anymore. Um, yeah, so um, I, I deal with on my, one of my other companies, I deal with NFPA all the time. So I'm always reading stuff that they send, even though it has nothing to do with what I'm doing. <laughs> they send us everything. So anyway, um, so uh, we had a, we had a long discussion, and I and uh, apparently Hopkinton is trying to do that, and they haven't been successful yet. And he told me that he'd stay in touch with them, and if they got a bylaw that worked, he'd give it to us, and then we can take a look at it and see if we want to add it into our subdivision control law. However, at this time, it does not exist, and I told him it would be a hardship because you'd have to go back to conservation because it's a previous area. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, and I, I don't, I didn't think that was fair at all. And so, um, just assure me that we'll have a minimum of 12 foot wide driveways all the way along, and I think all will be fine. Do you want it? Would you like us to add it to the decision or the supplementary covenant? I, I think most of them probably already are, aren't they? No, it doesn't. Well, I mean, they are on the plan, but yeah. we can add it if you want to say a minimum of 12, because yeah. there's nothing. Yes, to say please, that. please do that. So yeah. Danielle, I'll add those two things and I'll send them yeah. back to you. Because I, when Thank I you. look, when I looked at it, it looked like everything was already there, except for a couple of places where I think it was just the way they drew it. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. But we'll put it in writing so that you, it, it's yes. you know part yes. of the conditions. Yeah, I just wanted to know that we, uh, that, that that got resolved. Yes. Yep. Uh, one question for Danielle. Yes. In the uh, in the conditions, Danielle, are we? I don't know how many functioning. Um, drains there are in the street there must be there's got to be a couple i guess right some drywalls um manholes that are functioning for water in the street i'm not actually not I, sure i didn't i didn't know i didn't notice if uh if we were setting those at at um oh binder grade so that if there's a rain event and we're not covering them they're going to be active so they need to be cleaned when you put, you know, at, at, when you hand the thing over. We had uh, one of our co our developers had they put in the all the drains, but they were all <laughs> at finished height. Plus, yeah. they had filter covers over them, and we had a monster storm. Yep. And he flooded someone's house. When he builds it now, anything now after that, he put everything at binder grade and raised all the manholes because it was less expensive to do that than to pay off for the flooding claim. And it's being a bad neighbor at that point also. I think so he said it. It's kind I of mean, a standard procedure. We have no procedure. problem doing that, but I, I'm not, do you know how to write that, Danielle? I think that's a standard procedure for construction in the stormwater, in our stormwater rules, which this is gonna have to meet. So- um, All right, as long as it's- Yeah. If that's yeah, there, that's I, fine, Warren. I, I, um, I don't see, I don't see any. Well, other than that particular situation, most of the time, um, they've been aware that this needs to be done and 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 um, and have have uh, made sure that it happens. But I believe it's in stormwater. But but it would be a very simple um, 
uh, Jill, it would be a very simple thing to say during uh, during construction, all drainage structure will be at binder grade until final paving, and, and that's okay. as simple, as simple and as operative. That. Yeah. yeah. And operational, yeah. Right during, so that way, when before we set the final, the stormwater management plan works, right? Yes, that's right. Yes. That's correct. That's yes. correct. Okay. That you want now to I work a, yeah. So if you get some kind of a catastrophic event, it handles it the way it's supposed to. If it was done, and that yep. way, there we've no had that happen. <laughs> yeah. So More I was than once. We, we may have put that condition in. Um, remember that other one we had done. Remember because yeah. we yep. had yes. the exact conversation. So I think we I did that. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. remembering yeah. it too. Okay, so you can put that in as, uh, yep. as I'll lift yeah. it. I'll get that. Yeah. It today. just makes it makes a developer a good neighbor. Mm -hmm. And they should be. I mean, I, I yeah, agree. absolutely. And, and Dave is on the line. Dave Jamison, he agrees. He's a good neighbor. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we're just trying to make sure we cover all the bases so the things get done right. Sorry. Makes sense. All right, good. So do we have anything else? Is that, uh, I think that's probably the majority of, yes, Brian. Mr. Pierce, yes. Um, I, I think I'm the only one with an objection to this, so I won't drone on about it, but the, the waivers for sidewalks and curbs, can, I guess I'm just kind of curious to hear everyone else's take on it. I think last time I brought it up, everybody else was pretty much in support of, as it's been shown on the plan. Um, I, you know, I tend to think it was a matter of fairness for past developments that have required them and the fact that it's, an existing requirement, it kind of falls back to me in the same category as the, the hardship we discussed at oh. King's Row. Is there a hardship here that we're citing to grant these, or are we just making this a cheaper development for the developer? Well, no, we haven't gone through the waivers yet, Ryan. So those are next, uh, uh, those coming up here, so. Okay, well, I see the motions to, to grant them. So I just wanted right, to right. make sure we right. put that discussion point. just like to You've got to read every one of those, Ryan. Yeah, That's you're gonna read job. every one of those, and every one of those is gonna get is gonna get discussed. So you're 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 only a half a step ahead, but so you so why don't you start right in? <laughs> All right, so pause that, replay it after we get that. Up. There, there we go. go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said, boy, he's he's right on top of this today. <laughs> well, well, we can we can do waivers now. Do waivers? Yep. So Ryan, you can begin with the first one. We're, uh, section 350-21 and 26, sidewalks, which require sidewalks to be installed on both sides of the new subdivision street and allow instead of a sidewalk to be installed, only on one side is granted. Yeah. So um, that was, so what you, uh, you believe, so now's your time. So to say- what Well, you I got to say, you need a second first, don't you, Warren? Oh yeah, oh yeah, well- Second for discussion. Okay, all right. All right, so go ahead, Ryan. Go again, all right. So, I, yeah, I guess my question is, is I, for the other members of the board, I think we had a little preliminary discussion on this. Um, to me, it, you know, one of the subdivision rules that, you know, gives some consistency to the new subdivision in towns. I think it, it you know, creates a more walkable town. And I think it, I think it add value, adds value. I get on a quiet street, maybe it's not a ton of value. Maybe don't both don't get used a ton, but uh, I don't, I guess I'm, I'm curious what others' perspective is as to why it's of benefit to the town of North Reading to waive this requirement. Um, I, I think we're in a pretty substantial housing boom right now. Property values at an all-time high. I don't think profitability on the project's a big issue here. Um, I think uh, Attorney Mann mentioned briefly, uh, you know, concerns about stormwater and impermeable surface, which I think are valid points. Although if I think if there's one place we want to you know, create impermeable surface, it would be for walkability in town. So uh, my perspective is, is that it's not a, you know, I don't really see a, a good reason here to grant this, but uh, I'm curious to see what the other board members have to say. Okay, anybody else want to weigh in on it before I do? Go ahead, Warren. Okay, you know, we actually had a town, well, one of our previous <clears throat> town, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. no, I, I, yeah, I wouldn't mind chiming in a little bit. Um, you know, when we, when we had talked about it in the past, um, and again, the novice here, the, um, I'm learning as I go in terms of like the, the balancing of, uh, getting these things right for developers and, you know, us being reasonable in our demands and, um, uh, encouraging development and, or not discouraging development, I guess. Um, but I, I, I do agree with Ryan in the sense that, you know, the rule set up for a reason and, from the offset, I, I like 
the rule the way it is. And I, and for this development, I would prefer it to, to follow those rules from the perspective of my, the, the property that I live in. I I'm very curious as to why we don't have sidewalks when, when our development was done and, and I'm still learning through all this stuff of, you know, I'm very appreciative of this, of this conversation for this development. And it makes me think like, what was the conversation when my neighborhood was being done? And unless there is a hardship, I mean, I, I, I would be inclined to kind of think the way that Ryan is um, as a, as somebody who's living through the consequences of sidewalks not being considered um, mm-hmm. for the, for their property. So I just throw that out there for, uh, you know, for conversation fodder, but I, I'm very curious from the people you warn who have that experience of over the years. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. Um, so we actually had a town engineer that came in and tried to convince us never to put sidewalks on both sides again. And, um, and he actually showed us uh, at the time, that's when Steve was the, uh, our, 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 um, I'm an engineer. Engineer, yeah, he, uh, our town engineer. And the problem is, and you can see the problem if you drive around town with, with some of the subdivisions that did have sidewalks on both sides, they're in major disrepair. Uh, so what happens is nobody walks on them. And you drive, and I, and I just, even in the middle of the summer, you drive through all, the, so all these bigger subdivisions and see all the people out walking their dogs they are not on the sidewalk. They're all in the street. So the sidewalks are good to have. You should have at least a sidewalk on one side so kids can get back and forth to bus stops and things like that. But we don't, but every time you create infrastructure, you create a situation that's going to have to be fixed later on. And you don't, you don't have to go very far to find a lot of places where the sidewalks are so bad that nobody walks on them anymore. So um, that was the original thought was, what, why should we be creating infrastructure that we can't afford to fix? And does, is there enough, so again, we're back to the value thing, Ryan, is the value, is there enough value in a second sidewalk to say to the people later on, listen, we're going to put two sidewalks and fix them both in 20 years, you know what I mean? Um, and that was kind of the concept. If there was in a, in a subdivision where everything's kind of captured inside there, where you're not really subject to uh, um, people cutting through it to get from point A to point B, um, you know, if you if you had one, I'm trying to think of a subdivision. Uh, well, a lot like Harold Parker Estates, or but where they put sidewalks on both sides because people cut through there, so you really don't want people trying to cross the street in there. That was the concept. It is one of the places where most of the people walk in the street, however. But um, in, a subdivision, in a subdivision like this, you know, where everything is, where, where you're not going to have that cut through, you're not going to have that heavy traffic, other than people who live there, who are more likely to be careful with their neighbors, um, creating infrastructure that we are going to have to replace uh, isn't always a great idea. But that was the concept anyway, that there was enough safety in the single sidewalk and the lack of additional infrastructure. And then sometimes what we would do is get them to give us an offsite for it. If we're not gonna put the sidewalk there, can we put it along the street someplace where there isn't any sidewalk? Right. So, so, so we get, Mr. Pier- yeah, go ahead, Chris. So I, I do agree with Warren, you know, um, seeing all those spots where there are sidewalks on both sides of the street and they're walking in the street. The kids walk on the sidewalks sometimes, but a lot of times they walk in the middle of the street also. I have a sidewalk right here on Swan Pond. It's a dead end road. We have one sidewalk on one side of the street. Almost nobody walks on it. I walk on it when I go down the, down the street because I don't have to worry about where I'm walking when I'm walking on the sidewalk. And we clear it in the wintertime so people can walk on it. But most of these sidewalks, unless there's a school, within a mile walking, they are not cleaning that sidewalk. So it's all full of snow and people, the other thing is people park on them. Um, They they figure a way out, they pull up on a driveway and they park on it, even when there's vertical granite curbing. Um, So that's that's kind of 
um, my take. I do like sidewalks. I'm all for sidewalks. There's not a sidewalk on Chestnut Street or Flint Street. I don't even know if there's room to put a sidewalk on Flint Street because of the way the, the layout is. It's so old. And Chestnut mm-hmm. Street, it's looking pretty tight on Chestnut Street to put a sidewalk in there. Um, we might be able to sneak one in on one side, not on both. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's, I think that's, that's the unfortunate thing for, for me is that, like, you know, I, 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 I go back to my original position on this topic in that it doesn't seem reasonable to me to require a sidewalk on both sides of the street for this particular, you know, subdivision. I mean, right. it's, it's an in, internal setup. It's really just waste. Um, mm-hmm. However, there's something to be said for consistency. And again, that point of hardship. And, mm-hmm. you know, there... He, and I, I don't want to burden this developer with the bigger issues of our community, but I think that we have to view this from the bigger perspective of walkability is an issue in our town. And there are the streets that honestly need the sidewalks the most don't seem to have them. Uh, <laughs> the ones that have the, the ones that have the more traffic, et cetera, um, including in front of my house, uh, I have a personal stake in this. Um, you're right on Marblehead and, Street, right? Uh, yeah, you know. Yeah. So it's it's one of those where I just want us to be consistent when it comes to sidewalk expectations for developers. And right. for this particular project, I, I wouldn't go back on my position. I'm fine with my original position that one side of the street is fine for this kind of uh, development. But um, I'm just curious of the history of our decisions as to why other developments weren't weren't encourage their force to have sidewalks now again i'm not going to burden this development with the, mm-hmm. that kind of issue i'm still learning through all this stuff but yeah. that's why i don't change my position but well you'll, find, many, I... you'll find plenty of of, of the, the subdivisions dead end ones that have sidewalks on only one side which is yeah. allowed yeah. so um, they warn yes there's one thing i'd like to add is when the subdivision control bylaw was drawn up Waving a, a sidewalk on one side is easy. If there are no sidewalks at all on the street, then you can't add it in there. But taking one away in the right streets is, is something that we can do um, because the developer sees what he's got going on. And he's right, right in black and white. He knows he's going to either ask for a waiver or he's going to put sidewalks on both sides of the street. And we may ask him to take one off just because it's not necessary. It's a, it's a 500 foot long dead end road that needs sidewalk on one side. Um, but if it's not in the subdivision control bylaw up front, it's kind of hard to put it in later on. Yeah. That's some of the history there. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, so um, does that explain more to you, Ryan, about why, why uh, although your, your point is obviously well taken, so. Yeah, no, I don't. I, I think those are all good points. I, I think I still maintain my original position. I think if it's what's written in the in the section three fifty dash twenty one and twenty six, then it should be upheld ah. unless it's a hardship. Or at the very least, I think you know this board should you know at least require some something else in lieu of. I, I think Warren, you mentioned previously doing it on an adjacent street to provide connectivity or something like that, or. I don't know. I just think that, you know, giving away this requirement without a real hardship is, is a bad yeah. precedent. Well, some of the uh, the street, the, the sidewalk that we have down Haverhill Street here that just got done not too long ago, that was partially funded by a developer who didn't, who put a sidewalk on only one side and we, and the money to put this other, the rest of the sidewalk in was used to do the engineering for the sidewalk that we ended up on Haverhill Street where we really needed one. So, right. In a similar and, situation for uh, for Haver for uh, Marblehead Street, that right. walk goes down to that goes from the Hood School down to uh, down to uh, Little Meadow. So we, yeah, we have yeah. just have just, just shy of my house, just shy right. of my house. <laughs> right. Yeah. Back when they built Marblehead Street, though, it was horse and buggy, yeah. and an, an occasional car. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Luckily, you don't have to go too far to get to a. Uh, a sidewalk, but I mean, you know, but 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 you know, <laughs> trying to piece them together has really been the difficult part. When when they were not considered at first, and then coming from behind, trying to put, put them in, that's that's really um, 
that's really it. So, um, but I, but yeah. I find it interesting though that, that that there has been bargaining in the past of you yeah. know we have a requirement. There's yeah. a an investment required to meet that requirement, um, yeah. and if we can shift those funds away to other parts of town where the need the sidewalks, yeah. I I am in support of exploring that. Yeah. I mean, because again, well, I, mean, actually, I, yeah. I, I I have to speak up for my neighborhood, and yeah, that's, that's you know, I, I'm happy. I'm happy that the sidewalk got as far as it did, but yeah. I'm on a curvy S curve of a road where every yeah. time I pull into my driveway, I have to worry about the traffic, let yeah. alone taking the dog or my baby out for a walk. Yeah. So if we're, we're, we're haggling about a neighborhood getting two sidewalks and I'm like, <laughs> what we do for one, you know? So if there's, if, 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 so if there are ways to well, have, we have a, in we, these kind of situations, I, 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 you know, I mean, I don't want to put it on this developer to have to fund something that should have been done in my neighborhood back in the day. But if we have requirements, and there's not a hardship. Hey, that's the bargain. Yeah, because uh, we do. Uh, we have uh, what we call the sidewalk funds that we had people just make donations to, and we will use it for things like this. Um, <coughs> but we've uh, we've always valued it in some some respects to uh, um, about what what that would be, and then we've used it to put sidewalks other places. Or to do what we could with it. Is that still an active fund, Danielle? It is active. Yeah. I mean, we have it. Yeah. Yeah. No, we could consider putting a donation back into that again. Yeah. Um, but I don't know who was it that determined in the past the values, though, Chris? Was it. Uh, Bob Rogers did originally, yeah. and then it carried um, on, and it was twenty five. I thought per, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, twenty five. Something 100. per what? Per a lot, I think. Per lot. Yeah, there's a lot of lots here. There's thirteen of them as, as I count, right? So typically, six. don't you measure that by the cost of the of the sidewalk being? Yeah, raised? I thought that. I Not thought that I'm that advancing we... it because I've well, never had to pay it before in the town. But twenty five hundred a lot is. Wow, well, wow, so wow. you got to you got to remember when a developer puts a sidewalk in, it's a whole lot less money than when the town puts the sidewalk in. Right. And, the, hard, the, the thing is, if we put it in, it costs a certain amount. So it's supposed the linkage concept is supposed to be directly related to the benefit being received yeah. not right to the well and it's not just that how we did there's it, other waivers in here too we didn't we didn't get we didn't get that i don't think we got that much for uh, no that, uh, that's uh, a lot of money all right i'm not i'm not sure it's been a long time we could look it up i think what we got was we got a flat fee of some kind for it because i think that's that's what we got when we did that uh when we did the Havel street thing we got a flat fee and it was enough money to do with cover the engineering it was not um, no, it wasn't. Uh, that was that came out of. I wrote that check, Warren. That came out yeah. of the sidewalk fund. Yeah. The the money and that was over. That was more than one developer. Yeah. That that yeah. paid for that. Yeah. Debbie might Debbie might remember what it is. Uh, yeah. I think it was thir thirteen thousand or something like that. Thirteen for how many? But it was just uh, the no, total. I, mean, the, I can't remember per lot. I know it was per lot. I think the way that you used to do it. But I think that for Marblehead Street, it came out to like 13,000 something. Was that for Bradford Pond Estates? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I can tell you that. I have it. Right. Yeah, Bradford Pond Estates I remember we, eight with 32 lots. Yes, yeah. that was the last one I think we, we had this. Yeah, and that, yeah, and that we got the sidewalk out of it. Yeah, yeah. you haven't yeah. done anything since then. Right. Yeah, because I know that the last few I've done, there's been a waiver, um, but no compensation, you know, relative. I mean, I will add just, we are gonna do something to improve like the, the, the surrounding property, but I don't, I mean, I look, I don't know what you want, but I do know that it's usually, in my experience through towns, you usually base it on, and Warren, you may know this answer, a square foot cost for going yeah. down and putting it in because we know how long the road is. We know how big the the 
drive by drive foot. Policies. Yeah. That's Actually, how, uh, that's my a good a good contractor can put up a lot of sidewalk in in a day. You know, I got yeah. to do the prep work, and then the hot top guys just roll right through it. So. Oh yeah, it's a day, that's a day's work for them. It doesn't take them yeah. long at all. Yeah. Yeah, so it's I think that's why that's why thirteen thousand for thirty two lots that that's not very much money per lot. So. Um, no, but I it, I'm looking. Yeah, but you got to remember they also gave up a forty B lot too, Warren. Yeah. So Actually, you did, you did um you did request that two thirty nine north uh was it two thirty nine north um yeah they they're putting the sidewalk in but they didn't give us money to put in the sidewalk fund because they're going to do it themselves they're doing it themselves and there's a certain yeah. amount of right. sidewalk they have to put in for that right right I mean Dave you want to chime in I don't know that you really want to put in sidewalk anywhere I don't know that you're set up to do that um yeah I don't know I. I just listening, <laughs> um, you know, whatever the board decides is what we do. Okay, you can okay. put it in if they chose to do that. I didn't know if you, you were- know, I don't know if that originally had looked at it that way. Um, it se seemed like that waiver was something that was uh, looking positive as far as being uh, waived, but um, whatever you guys decide, yeah. that would have to look at it. Well, see, every one of these subdivisions is a little different in one way or another. Like this one connects two major roads as opposed to um, uh, one that goes into a dead end or to a cul-de-sac, yep. as opposed to one that goes into a cul-de-sac but it has a road that goes off to one side to a cul-de-sac or feeds off a, a pass-through road. I mean, every every, every single one is, has their own special um, thing about the way they're they're constructed. So this one does have the uh, will have the ability where you could actually cut through, but I don't see that happening, which is why I was okay with the single sidewalk, but. But sidewalks are a big deal for us, and so do, do we want to try to figure out a a, a number for this? Uh, you know, something. I googled it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how appropriate that is, but I googled it, and the costs range from seven to thirteen dollars a square foot. It says. Yeah. All right. So we need to know what the square footage would be. Five times. What's the linear footage of the street? Do you know that? Oh, off the top, I, I, I should, but it's got to be 500 and something because we didn't need a waiver for length. Um, I apologize, Danielle. Do you know that? Off the top? I, I don't. Um, it'll take me just a second to figure it out. One sec, because it's right on the front page. I'm sorry, I should have that at my fingertips. And I that's don't. all right. It's not every day uh, we ask a lawyer that question. Where's your engineer? I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Damn him. The engineer would know that number right off the top. Oh, and in the second, in an absolute heartbeat, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I can tell you it's it's 2.17 acres. How's that? Oh dear God, where is the we could use that number. Um, you could use that number. Acres. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know that. Well, they... yes and no, you can. It, it's no, you it's can. a difficult, you can't really do that. Uh, Daniel. Yeah, you're no. right. <laughs> okay. I can, one sec. Let's just, I can measure. Oh, I was going to get square feet, but that's, you need linear feet. Yeah. I mean, it should be on the front page, but. Yeah, it yeah. you're not going to get. Oh, you know yeah. what though? In my narrative, I bet money that I put it in there. So here we go. Let's look at my narrative. So it's going to be it's going to be five hundred and some odd feet long. Yeah, it's going to be seven uh, right Oh, because huh? it is it is longer. Wait a second. The, I was going to um, say it's longer than that. It breeze through street. It's one. It's it is long. One thousand yeah. seven hundred and twenty-two feet. Um, I, because it cuts through. Remember. That's that's yeah. eighty-six hundred square feet of of sidewalk. Can I just, um, I'm not sure unless I look at the book with my, um, the accounts, but for Bradford Pond, I think they paid us the first half of 13,500 and they had to give us the second half. So I might be. But then they I, put the sidewalk not, in also. I'm not absolutely sure. Um, there were two payments. No, the town, um, the town put the, the, town put oh, the, the sidewalk town put it in. in. Okay. Yeah, but I'm I'm trying to think if maybe they put thirteen five down and then they had to give us another thirteen five at the end. 
I can yeah, find that the, out pretty quickly if you want me yeah. to. I don't know if it's relevant. Um, so, so Jill, wanna, what was what was the be, cost per square foot? Fifty thousand dollars, and I know that's not right. <laughs> Uh, no, I, mean, I think it was thirteen five plus thirteen five or something. But right, yeah. That's but that's for thirty two lots, right? Yeah, yeah. We have thirty. Which one was that? How long ago was that? Uh, that was, was two thousand. Oh, I can look it up again. I I have it right here. One sec. It was a while ago. Probably ten years. Five years. years. Yeah, it was a, it was approved before me. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, here it is. Okay. It was finished during your time, though, Danielle. Yes. Uh, yeah, but it lasted a long time. Little Meadow Way. It's a long yeah. time. 2010. Yeah. It's 20, 12 years. Yep. God, I'm getting old. Yep. <laughs> you are. You I are. Was, I, was, I was sitting on the board way before that, too. <laughs> and, Warren's, and Warren's got more years on it than me. <laughs> Um, maybe it was was it was it only five hundred a lot back in the day? Find out. Uh, no, it, well, if I take the twenty six thousand, which is what we got, divided by the thirty two, it's eight hundred and twelve dollars a lot. Eight hundred and twelve. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, so if you were looking at a thousand dollars a lot, and you got how many lots here? Thirteen. Thirteen. That'd be thirteen thousand dollars. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I, where we started, didn't that where we started? <laughs> I have no, I, no, it was 13 something a lot. So, um, I mean, Dave. I said 2,500 a lot, so. Oh, there you go. Dave, we're looking at, you know, having a compensatory payment in order to put it in the sidewalk fund to address the concerns of Mr. Carroll and also, you know, the reasonable concerns of Jeremiah. You, you get a waiver, you don't have to put it in. The cost is a thousand a lot, so it's a $13,000 payment. Yep, sorry guys. Okay. All right. Okay. You know, and it's you also got to remember that we've got one more waiver, and we don't. It's usually one thing that we do. No, I agree. And we, okay. the reason, you know, I and the, wanna, and Mr. Carroll asked why we're doing the curbing. That's literally so that we can do low impact development. If we put curbing in, right. we cannot. That's, that's right. No, and I understand that. And it's like uh, number three. You already asked us, and we said okay on that. That was to take the grass swales away across the crossings. You only did, yeah, to minimize yeah. the and, and and but you're putting vertical granite curb there. Yeah, we are which is good because now that's slowing the car down. That's what the vertical granite curb is to keep it helps with plowing. Yep. Because the plows can follow that, not destroy it. It also mm -hmm. helps keep people alive with cars jumping curbs. Doesn't too much with a truck because their tires are so big. Mm -hmm. But cars it, it, it hopefully stops a car from jumping that curb. And that's like um, the compensation for that. I get you. You know, and, right. so, and, uh, so so if we do if we um if we do that, Brian, there's um some money in the sidewalk fund that we can work at putting a sidewalk. We can start looking for a good place to put that. <laughs> and, you know, Street. I mean, it, I mean, you know, this I'll is how go. we've got a lot of the sidewalks. We, this is how we have a lot of the sidewalks that we have now that never had sidewalk yeah. before. So it's a it's a worthwhile. It's a worthwhile thing to do. So, yeah. So, um, so I guess what we do is modify that motion to say that to reflect that payment um, in lieu of uh, the sign. When would it be due? Yes, we had that problem before, Danielle. So, when would we, we pay it? We've done what, a third, a third, and a third, Danielle? Um, for Bradford Pond, it was 13,500 had been. Um, do after the fifth building permit for the subdivision has been applied for. Okay. Um, and then there was a final payment of 13.5, which was supposed to be um, when the last building permit for the subdivision was applied for. But um, for some reason, I think that happened like last year or something. Yeah. I, yeah, I, but I remember well, also it was because we sold yeah. lots and that's, yeah. there was that issue. Yeah. So what we right. can't, so if we don't, I'm, I'm, I'm actually, if we don't build the home, the building permit doesn't work. Yeah, you're right. right. I think maybe before a lot release. Yes. Does that work? I think that's what that's we have to do. That's the last time that we really have full control of the subdivision. You had as trouble with that, release. Danielle, I remember. Yeah. And and we talked about it. And I think lot release seems to work because we right. still have control. And if they don't pay their their dues, then they can't get their lot released to them. And if they sell a lot outright or if they build on it, that's how they're making their their 
their cash infusion comes from. Can we so, agree to that? Because then we can track it better. Because when there's like an amorphous reason, it's hard for us to track it. And Danielle and I have this issue. So that's why I say, it's good. Do it with the releases because we know I'll put the language in and it'll be easy. All right. So it'll be the with, before the first release, if that works. Because otherwise so we, it's hard. We give how much before the first release? Half and then... Um, do you want to do half before the first release and half before... The seventh Six. release. Seventh, okay. Six, so seven. Yeah. Half. Because that's that's half. That's about half of the subdivision. Yeah, it is. Dave, you okay with that? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. That that's that'll be manageable, and I'll work it in, or we'll sure. work on it tomorrow and get it all done, Daniel. Okay. Um, so we got to modify your motion there, a little Ryan. Are you good with this? Yes. Okay. See, you won. <laughs> <laughs> No, oh, actually, we, we, we've done this we so many win. times. We, we've, we've, done, done, we've done this so many times, and it's been good for the town. Every it time. is good for the town. Absolutely. So that, Absolutely. That's really it's the, not like really it. The win. We don't Jeremiah, see it. But... I don't know if we can get that sidewalk up by your house. We'll have a look. <laughs> <laughs> Baby steps. <sighs> we'll have to look at that um, right away um, and all the other stuff. Okay, uh, Danielle, do you want to modify that motion for him, or do you want him to? He can just yeah, so move. Um, so or do we want to modify it by by including in the motion what the payment amount is? Is that what Probably. we want to do? Okay. Yeah. You could you could put it in. Terms. You don't need to put the terms in the terms Jill can put in. Okay. Then yes. I will see. Let me just take a look back at that motion just for a moment. Okay. Um, Well, Danielle, how about this? I have another idea. Okay. Why don't we uh, table this one for now, and let's finish the other. Uh, uh, the two. Yeah, the other two, and then we'll come back to this. Okay, <laughs> let's just. I I don't want to forget to come back. To, oh, actually, I have them open. If you wanted, I mean. Oh no, I have the motions open for the wrong meeting. So yes, let's go ahead and do, do exactly. What do you want just to add in subject to the agreed conditions? Is that yeah, you there you go. You, you can say yes. that. There you go. Yes. Okay. There you go. To be right, very good. Yep, good. All right. 350-21 and 26 sidewalks, which requires the sidewalks to be installed on both sides of a new subdivision street and allow instead a sidewalk to be installed only on one side, subject to the agreed conditions is granted. Second. Okay, okay good. And uh, I have a motion and a second, so I will uh, look for uh, a vote. Uh, Jeremiah? Aye. And Krista? Aye. And Mr. Carroll. Aye. And I am I also. All right, thank you. Uh, next one. Section 350-27 curbs and berms, which requires curbing and allowance said country drainage and no curbing. Yeah, we want the country drainage there because of the way that is. So uh, uh, does anybody have any questions on that? Can I have nope. a second? <laughs> second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I'm sorry, Warren. Let me just. I, I have the same comment here, to be honest with you. Um, again, I, you know, Chris's point about the value with the plowing and overall road maintenance. Again, I, I, I just, I, I don't follow the allowing the country drainage in these subdivisions. Well, this is again something that we've done in the past in a in a situation where it proves to be the best way to do it. Um, so, and, and can, you, can you elaborate on that? Why? why it's preferential here? Well, I think because of the topography of this, I, I believe is why we were looking at it this way to, um, um, because when you start collecting it and then you have to have, you have to have the ability to get it to a place to dispose of it otherwise. Right now and with country drainage, it takes, it's normal, it, 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 it uh, dissipates the way it would under the existing conditions. So we've done that a number of, that, that road out behind Lawrence Road, out behind the shoe and a number of places where we've gone with the country drainage because it was the best. Uh, and also there, there's less, again, there's less infrastructure for maintenance. The town doesn't have to keep going in with the bucket truck and cleaning the catch basins. You know, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's, there's a advantages in the maintenance to a, um, to a um, 
country drainage is called low is, is low impact paint drainage. That's what it's called because it doesn't uh, require all that a bunch of maintenance. Yeah. So in, in past developments, when it's been required per the bylaw, the trade off presumably would have been probably losing a buildable lot to to be able to add that drainage infrastructure. No. 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 No, usually so, it's um, again. Usually it's it's the low impact thing. It's the ability not to have a bunch of structures that you have to maintain. Usually they put those structures. They they put those structures on uh, someone's property. Also, Ryan, they don't. It's not always just you know in in a right of way area. They we get it accessed by easement to some of those structures. They're actually someone's paying taxes on the property. And they can't use it. I guess I just struggle with why we have a bylaw that we just circumvent because we like doing it a different way better. Then why aren't we changing the, the bylaw instead of just circumventing it at every turn? Well, we don't really. Uh, in in sit, there, there are plenty of subdivisions you'll, where you'll find uh, none of these none of these uh, waivers uh, because it's it's uh, pertinent and it's uh, practical to apply them all. So it's it's more it's a it's a situation where you have one where where it makes sense to go to low impact development where it just makes sense, and so you do it. I mean that's what we've done in the past, um, and yet so, you get a a, a, a fully developed uh, subdivision like Shea Lane, for example, and and we need all the infrastructure because of the grade changes and everything. You need every bit of the infrastructure, so there's no waivers on that. So that's not the case in this one. It's also been uh, the low impact has been more proven over the few the last few years that mm -hmm. it does function properly and protect other you know protect people's homes and and uh, right. their pro other properties. Yeah, because it basically emulates the existing conditions to some extent, which is which is always good. So. Okay, so uh, I have a motion and a second. Do I have a second on that already? Yeah, I second that. Okay, you second it. Okay, uh, Jeremiah, how say you? Uh, aye. And Chris, Aiden? Aye. And Ryan Carroll? Nay. No? Okay, and I'll say aye. So we have three ayes and a, and a no. So. Passes. So, but it still passes. And uh, if you would please, Ryan, the next one. Mr. Pierce, section 350-28 grass plots, which requires a glass, grass plot between the pavement and the sidewalk areas and instead wave a grass plot along the sidewalk in the area adjacent to the wetland filling area is granted. Second. Yep. And that's again to provide for the drainage, the low impact drainage, same situation. So any questions or comments on that? Okay, uh, Jeremiah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to defer to your guys' experience on this one and and go with the uh, go with the group. I'll say aye. Okay, and Chris Hayden. Aye. And Ryan Carroll. Aye. And myself is aye. So there are that's that's all our waivers. Perfect. Thank you. Except for that first one, we have to. Oh no, Ryan did it. No, I'm we, sorry. We finished it. We finished yeah, Ryan it. did it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now we're down to just the, the uh, draft conditional approval. And Julie, you said you went through and you're okay with it. You have no changes or issues. Any we are objections? absolutely fine. Mr. Jameson agreed to the conditions, so okay. it is in a condition that we think is acceptable. Okay, Danielle, did you have a comment? Yeah, I just wanted to mention that um, yesterday I went through everything again with uh, Dave Giangrande, and he actually sat down with the peer review engineers who had worked on this, and um, just wanted to confirm that he was. Um, satisfied with the way everything was done. And I only asked him that kind of as a last um, check because of some issues we've had with, with other, you know, previous subdivisions and concerns about drainage and neighbor and impacts to neighbors. So really asked that he go through it again. He, he was happy with everything, um, you know, mentioned those few conditions that were added and um, that are already reflected in the conditional approval. Okay, good. Okay, so, um... If you, uh, if if I may, have you Ryan do the uh, for the conditional approval? As, yes, as, 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 amend, as amended this evening. 
this evening. Okay. So Mr. Pierce, I move the Community Planning Commission vote to approve the plan entitled Definitive Subdivision and Notice of Intent of Plans, Coakley Estates, 39 Chestnut and 6 Flint Street, North Reading, Mass, 01864, MAP 56, parcel 74 and 80, dated August 30th, 2021, last revised February 4th, 2022, drawn by ASB Design Group, LLC, subject to the terms and conditions of the Certificate of Conditional Approval, dated March 1st, as amended this evening. Can I just make one comment that there was a, it's nine Flint? It's that also called fake. It's Danielle. also called Cranberry Meadows, and I don't yes. know if there was a revision date. It is February 4th, 2022. Yeah, we had that and, in there. And I apologize. Mm -hmm. The Deep engineer breath. kept using six flint, but it's nine. He just nine. transposed right. it. I don't know how you transpose right. it upside down, but <laughs> sorry. Okay, for the interruption. So I have a motion. I have a motion and a second. And uh, so I will ask Jeremiah, how say you? Aye. And Chris Hayden? Aye. And Ryan Carroll? Aye. And myself is aye. So uh, there's your approval. Thank you. And um, I, I appreciate it. We, you, we look forward to working with you to make sure everything works good. Yep. So um, and let us know if there are any issues. Appreciate it. And Danielle, we will touch base again tomorrow. Uh, yes. Thank you. Good um, evening, everyone. Wait, okay. wait, 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 oh, Debbie oh, has oh. something. Um, okay. Just, um, uh, Jill, I need to get at least one mile, uh, one set of paper copies of the plan yep. to be signed. Oh, just one in one? One in well, one. Well, we Alexis. haven't done the endorsement yet. So when we're ready for the plans to be endorsed, mm -hmm. after the appeal period runs and the town clerk can certify it, then at that point, we usually get the mile, all right? Yeah. I'm gonna, once we do this, then the, after the appeal period expires, typically I'll deliver to you, um, but I'll give you the plan so that you can tell me if you like it, don't like it, and I'll make changes because I do have to put all the conditions on. Yeah, make sure you got yes. my 12 feet on there for those uh, for those driveways. 100%, I have it written down. Okay, yeah, good. There are a few notes that'll be changed on the final plan. Yeah, tomorrow yeah, Danielle and I will go through everything and make sure it's perfect. Yep. Yeah, I think. I think uh, Debbie was just trying to make sure she didn't get too much stuff that we don't need for the so final one sign. Copies. Yeah, because I think you asked for three in, in the record somewhere. So oh, I yeah, can do we one. don't need three. Yeah. yeah. We just unless really need... Sorry. No, sorry, but Debbie, go ahead. Um, unless you want a copy of the uh, a paper copy signed by the planning board, then you would give me two sets of paper and one mila. Um, Dave, do you have any desire for that? Or I can just make copies, you know, do you, do you have any desire, Dave, to get paper copies of the signed? No, original, you know what? That's, original signatures. That, yeah, that's, that's crazy. It. You know what? I can make copies. No, let's not. Let's not add more paper. No. Okay. okay. And and we're gonna get we're gonna get a uh, uh, electronic copy of it anyways, right? One hundred percent. Yeah. I I usually make electronic copies after they're signed and then after they're recorded. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Whatever you whatever you need, Debbie. That's just a mylar and a paper copy for us to keep. Okay. One and then more. later in the process, we get um, the electronic file, whether it's a CAD file or whatever format it is. So our GIS uh, coordinator can put it into the, the town system, but that, that can happen. Actually, no, that happens before endorsement. Yeah. Pardon? No. It, it, I think that happens before the plan endorsement. It's it's among the it's in the list. Yeah, it, it says it says give you CAD because in that list, yes. Debbie's right. It does say three pop three papers. So you're right, and we don't we don't. Okay, we got, I got gotcha. you. It's a lot of paper to sign. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's the real thing. I know. <laughs> four copies, and then you know if there are thirty or forty sheets in there, that times four. That's a lot. And it's, it's just as easy. And it's just as easy for me to just make copies of my life. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like an original. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, Perfect. All right. Have a good evening and yes. I will see you soon. <laughs> okay, good. Take care. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, David. Bye. Yep. Bye. Okay. Um, that Anything sounds... else? I see a uh, Mr. Richard Johnson. Do you have a comment or a question, sir? No, I was just wondering. I was, I was interested in hearing about the development going on at uh, the Crestwood Estate. 
Yeah, we just finished with that, so. Okay, well, that was all I was interested in. Okay, well, um, okay, well, we just finished going through that, so it's all it's all set for now. Okay, thank you. Okay, Recorded. no problem. Okay, so uh, we I think that's it for us for tonight. Danielle, do you have anything else? Nope. Okay. I I do. Okay. Go ahead, Again, sorry. You need signatures, Debbie. I need signatures. So um, I need signatures on some invoices, some payroll, uh, yep. some other correspondence, and I have about six sets of minutes now, Ryan. I'm coming so, for you, Debbie. I keep forgetting. <laughs> I'm I'm going to start texting you. You're not going to like it. Ask Warren and <laughs> give it to me. Give it to, I deserve it, Debbie. It to me. I'll be in. I apologize. I, I will see you soon. You will. Okay. Hey, Debbie. Okay. Is it going to yes. be ready tomorrow afternoon? Uh, I, I can stop in tomorrow it, afternoon to sign stuff. Yes, I'm going to do it in the morning. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll come by tomorrow, right. Deb, at some point, and take care of it. Okay. Thank you. Right. I need three. Uh, yeah, no, that that should be good. Okay. If Thank Ryan you, shows up, then you'll get your third one right there. I will get my yeah. yes. I will be. I will be there. I'll be there. <laughs> Thank you. Just got called out. I deserve <laughs> it. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank, and thank you guys for your input. I mean, it does it does matter. It makes us think about everything that we do. Yeah. When you, uh, you know. when you bring everything up, so the more we think about it, the better decisions we make in most cases. So it's all good. So all right. Uh, so thanks you all for coming to it, and uh, have all have a good night. Thank you. You too. Bye. Take care, everybody.